Hello, I'm Steve McConnell, and in this segment I'd like to talk about hashtag no estimates and propose some better hashtags for this particular topic. Uh, in case you're not familiar with my background, I've written several books, uh, the most uh, popular of which is Code Complete. The topic of this particular segment, though, really is about software estimation. And uh, since I published a book on this topic, I actually find this idea of hashtag no estimates pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the basic proposition of no estimates. To me, the basic proposition looks like this. Uh, part one is that organizations and individuals spend a lot of time estimating. Uh, part two is a lot of the estimates are inaccurate or number three, even if they are accurate, they're ignored when they're accurate. And therefore, number four, the time spent creating estimates is wasted. Well, for a guy who wrote a book on software estimation, this is a very interesting uh, set of statements. And I would say, frankly, uh, in a lot of ways, I think this uh, set of statements is true. Um, I would evaluate this reasoning as correct as far as it goes, uh, but I would say true kind of. Uh, and there are some important uh, exceptions uh, to that idea that it might be true. So let's take a look at uh, these points step by step. Uh, this first claim, organizations and individuals spend a lot of time estimating. Well, no doubt. Most organizations do spend a lot of time estimating. In my view, they spend more effort than they need to to get worse estimates than they could. Uh, and in my mind, this is not a reason to stop estimating. It's a reason to get better at estimation. Uh, and so, of course, an alternative to hashtag no estimates is to just improve the estimates. Uh, and I think most businesses would agree with that. I would acknowledge that that number is not 100%, uh, but I think most businesses would agree with that. I think there's another factor that we need to take a look at here too, uh, which is the Agile Manifesto. Uh, the Agile Manifesto makes this claim that we value customer collaboration over contract negotiation. And I think it's relevant to ask the question, what does collaboration look like if our customer wants estimates? And I think in a lot of cases, they do want estimates. And if we're going to collaborate with them, then we should give them estimates. And if we don't have the skill to give them estimates, then we should develop the skill needed to give them meaningful, accurate estimates. Uh, so what about that second claim? A lot of the estimates are inaccurate. Well, again, I would say that that's true. Uh, but the alternative solution uh, that would be an alternative to not estimating would be to actually improve estimation. And of course, that's why I wrote my book, Software Estimation, a few years ago, because the goal of that is to help people improve estimation. I would agree that there is a lot of bad estimation going on out in, the, out in practice, but I think a good solution is to actually try to improve it. Uh, and then the third claim is that even when estimates are accurate, they are ignored. Well, I think that that's true as far as it goes, but I think it's also fairly reasonable from the point of view of the estimate consumer, which is if the if the people producing the estimates give accurate estimates sometimes, but inaccurate estimates a lot of the time, we can't really expect the people consuming the estimates to trust the estimates when they're only accurate part of the time. And that is another reason that I wrote the book on software estimation. Uh, if we can get to the point where we're actually estimating accurately and consistently, then we have a reasonable basis for expecting people to actually accept our estimates. But when the estimates are not very accurate in the first place, we cannot reasonably expect that. Uh, then moving a little bit to uh, that last point then, the time spent creating the estimates is often wasted. I would agree with that as a literal statement. I think it is often wasted. But I think that if we get better at estimating, we actually find that people who are better at estimating will spend less time producing better answers, meaning more accurate estimates, and that time will not be wasted. So let's take a step back and say, what is the real issue with hashtag no estimates? And I think the Agile Manifesto actually gives us a pretty good clue here by focusing on customer collaboration uh, over contract negotiation. And I think if we're really going to collaborate with our customers, we should acknowledge that most businesses want estimates. Some don't, but most do. Uh, if we are going to collaborate with people in our business, that means providing the estimates the business is asking for. And I think this makes a lot of sense if we put ourselves in our customer's shoes. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like when we do put ourselves in our customer's shoes and see what customer collaboration really looks like uh, in our personal decision making. Let's say, for example, that you have $30,000 uh, to do a kitchen remodel. You've gone to your bank, you've taken out a home improvement loan, and your bank has said, OK, fine, we'll give you $30,000, but that's, that's the maximum we're going to give you. And so you and your spouse have a vision of what you'd like your kitchen to look like. 
And in your vision, you're thinking, wow, if we redo our kitchen, we'd really like to have new cabinets, new countertops, new flooring, new sink and faucet, and new appliances. And that all sounds great. You and your spouse are in agreement on that. Uh, and so you meet with a contractor to talk about how to get your kitchen remodeled. And uh, you say, we'd like new cabinets, countertops, flooring, sink and faucet, and appliances, and our budget is $30,000. Now, what do you expect the contractor to say? Well, if we uh, follow the hashtag no estimates approach, the contractor is going to respond, tell me what is the highest priority? What do you want first? Uh, at this point, maybe your spouse responds something like, we want to do all of it. Can we do it all for $30,000? And again, if the contractor is following the hashtag no estimates, he might respond, I don't believe in estimates. I value customer collaboration over following a plan. At which point you respond, well, how is that going to work? How will we know what we're getting for our money? And he responds, we'll just always do the next most useful thing until we run out of money. Uh, and at that point, your spouse might very well respond, well, what if we run out of money before we're done? Uh, and again, following the hashtag no estimates approach, uh, the contractor would say something like, well, since we're always doing the next most useful thing, you'll always have the most you could possibly have gotten for the money you have. At which point, your spouse could easily respond something like, that doesn't really make sense because we could spend the whole $30,000 on cabinets and not have anything left for the rest of the project. And uh, you could chime in, we need an estimate so we can have some idea of how much to spend on the cabinets. Uh, and then the contractor responds, okay, cabinets, let's get started on those. What kind of cabinets did you want? Well, what do you think about all this? How do you feel when you put yourself in the customer's shoes? Does it feel to you like the contractor is really collaborating with you in refusing to give you an estimate? Does this sort of reasoning make sense when it's your money that you're spending? Well, I can tell you my reaction is it doesn't feel very good to me, and I don't feel like the contractor is collaborating with me. In fact, the contractor feels like, uh, kind of feels to me like the contractor is obstructing what I'm really trying to get done. And I think it's also good to point out that the amount of money in this example is fairly small. $30,000 is an amount of money that might be probably on the order of two staff months of programmer time, maybe not even that much. And in most cases, when we're talking about projects in a software context, we're talking about a lot more money than that. We're not talking about $30,000. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. And I think as a general principle, the more money involved, the more the business is going to want estimates. The more the business is going to want to know what it's going to get for the money it spends, just like you're going to want to know what you get for the amount of money that you might spend on a kitchen remodel. And if we uh, take a look at the various reasons that businesses might want estimates, there are lots of good reasons businesses want estimates. They need estimates to support an annual budgeting cycle. They need to know how much money to allocate to different parts of the business. They need it for project portfolio planning so that they know how much money to allocate to different projects. And that includes a notion of how much staff to allocate to different projects. Estimation helps to know whether I should allocate 60% of staff to one project and 40% of staff to the other project or vice versa. And estimation plays a critical role in that. Estimation also plays a role in support for recruiting and hiring. How are, how are we going to know whether we need to hire more people if we don't have estimates for the effort required that would tell us that we're going to need more people? If we're not estimating, we don't have any basis for saying that we want uh, uh, more people in our teams. Uh, we also need estimation for project status tracking. One of the main ways we track progress on a project is by comparing planned to actual. And the planned uh, progress is based on the estimates for the projects. There are lots of good reasons that businesses want estimates. Uh, and I think uh, we should acknowledge that. When we talk to our business, we should acknowledge that these are legitimate reasons. And as software professionals, we should actually do our part to provide uh, those estimates to support the overall goals of the business. Uh, now, I will admit that sometimes businesses don't want estimates. There are cases, I think there are a minority of cases, but there are cases where businesses truly do not want estimates. If you're in a dynamic market that is experiencing explosive growth, maybe you're in a mobile app space where you're hiring people as fast as you can, there may not be a lot of value in estimation because you're just releasing functionality as quickly as you possibly can on very short turnaround cycles. Uh, related to that is the idea that if I already know I'm 50% understaffed, 
uh, and I have 10 open headcount in my group, it doesn't really matter if I'm exactly 40% understaffed or 50% understaffed or 60% understaffed. I know that I'm significantly understaffed, and so estimating a more specific number there doesn't really help uh, when I'm not anywhere close to where I need to be in the first place. Uh, another example of a case where a business doesn't want an estimate or doesn't need it is tiny projects that can't justify the overhead. If I've got a project that I know I have to do, but that's a two-day project or three-day project or four-day project, it probably isn't worth the effort to, uh, to uh, estimate that project if I know that I'm going to do it no matter what the answer is. And so that would be a generalization of that case is if I know I'm going to do the project anyway and it's small, no matter what the estimate is, then there's really no point in estimating it. Uh, and another context in which estimates aren't really needed is when you're doing work that isn't really done in projects, uh, where a project is something with a defined beginning and an end. If you're in a product support stream where you're taking an input stream of product support tickets and working off those tickets in priority order, then estimation may not be all that relevant. Uh, and so if we're not really focused on projects at all but more of a stream of work, then that might be another context where estimates aren't really that useful. Now having said all that, I think that most businesses still want estimates, and certainly for larger pieces of work, the businesses generally do want estimates, uh, but there are cases where they don't, and so I think the binary positions of hashtag no estimates, and I'll make up one, hashtag always estimate, are actually both partially wrong. Those extremes uh, don't really reflect the way the world actually works. And so really what we should do is we should be figuring out when should we estimate, not should we estimate yes or no, but when should we estimate, and I'll ask the question, how could you possibly know whether your business values estimates? And the answer is pretty simple. It is ask the business. Ask the business whether they want estimates or not. Uh, don't assume that they do. Don't assume that they don't. But if you ask them, I'm sure they will tell you. And uh, with that in mind, I will propose what I believe to be two better hashtags. And that is hashtag know when to estimate and hashtag ask the business.